Hey, what's up, guys? It's Coach Gaglione here. This is another edition of the Powerlifting for the People podcast. And I got my buddy Jed here today. What's, what's up? up How, How are you, are you man? <laughs> uh, so we got kind of a special treat. Uh, we, we're going to talk about like a little bit of a product that we're coming out with. And specifically, this is going to be a listen for anyone that's got any issues with their grip uh, for right. the deadlift. So if you're dropping deadlifts, maybe you're tearing calluses, you're having trouble like with that deadlift lock holding on to the deadlift uh, lockout, we're going to talk about that. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of that discussion, uh, Jen, can you just give us a little bit of an intro for people that maybe aren't familiar with who you are, like who you are, uh, where you're from, and what you got going on right yeah. now? Yeah, so I've, uh, I've been training seriously in strength since about... 2002, when I first started uh, basically doing uh, Olympic weightlifting. That was my first entrance into strength training, gradually got into strongman, and I really liked that. And I found out there was actually a grip strength contest going on right around the same time as the first strongman contest I was doing. So I signed up for that as well because I knew that grip would be important for strongman. But it was really all about strongman. So eventually, after a bunch of injuries, the strongman was out the window. I couldn't really do that anymore, but the grip uh, didn't, didn't uh, injure my back to the same degree. So I was able to do that and I've become really good at that. I'm probably top five, at least in the United States. I've won some world level competitions, um, multiple national competitions and worked with lots of people at my facility on, uh, on strength training as well. Athletes, general population, things like that. And, we never drop any deadlifts, so I got you covered. And then uh, any type of records that you're still holding and have held in the past? Like, yeah, like, uh, my, my specialty in grip sport was pinching. So I have large hands and a really long thumb, so I'm able to, I'm really able to pinch well. So I've had five world records on the two hand pinch left. Awesome. Um, I currently have the world record on the one hand pinch on the flask, which it's just a one hand pinch thing mainly is what you need to know. It's kind of like pinching up, uh, uh, pinching the other two 45 pound plates. Um, and I have the world record for the most weight lifted on that one hand pinch. I've also done some lifts where uh, I held a record for uh, wrist strength um, with wrist levering devices in grip as well. So cool. kind of, uh, kind of all, all around. You, you yeah. really have to be well rounded to, uh, to win a competition. So. So I think uh, kind of piggybacking off of that, what you said, because we started to kind of talk about pinching and, and, and different things. Uh, so I think one of the things that's important for the discussion today is just a brief overview of like the different types of grips. A lot of people might think that, um, you know, just one kind of size fits all in terms of grip training and, and, and training your grip. But obviously like for the deadlift, there's a specific type of yeah. hand strength and finger strength that you need. And if you're doing, like you mentioned, the pinch block or something that's a thicker object like an axle, uh, so can you just kind of briefly kind of go over the types of grip and then specifically like what kind of grip strength that you need uh, specifically yeah. for like a normal barbell? Sure yeah. thing. Yep. So you want to think of grip as everything from the elbow down because a lot of the muscles that uh, are in your hands actually start up here. So you want to think about the strength from here down is, is what you're dealing with with grip. And then... We, we, there's mainly three types of grip strength that are defined. So if you're closing a gripper or moving your hand through a bucket of sand or rice, that's called crushing. So that's a dynamic type of, of lift. You're, you're covering a distance. Pinching is more isometric generally, and that's where your thumb is going to be on one side, your fingers are on the other side. So you're, you're driving your hand together like that. So that's pinching. That, it can be dynamic if you have like a a light gripper or a clamp or something that you can almost add, do an action like a yeah, close. I've seen like maybe the old uh, Iron Mind uh, telegraph. Yeah, a telegraph like, lever device like, where you push down on the handle here and then the weight picks up on the other end. That's all pinching. Mainly that's your thumb strength. That's your, that's your main thumb strength type of lift. And then you also have supporting, which is another type of grip that is mainly static. You're not going to have a lot of movement there and you're just wrapping your fingers around something. Generally, you try to seal your thumb over your fingers in order to reinforce it, uh, but the fingers are doing the majority of the work. This is where thick bar comes in, in, in grip. You have a lot of implements that are either like a two inch or a two and a half inch diameter or thereabouts, and generally you end up opening your hand, so you can't get a complete seal, and it's called open hand. 
an open hand position. So usually, uh, if you think of the iron mine axle, that's really a common implement, or also the Thomas Inch replica dumbbell. Both of those, unless you have really, really large hands, you're gonna have an opening sure. between your fingertips and thumb. And some of the products that we've talked about in the past, something like a fat grips, or I don't know, maybe an iron bowl, there's a bunch of different companies yeah. out there. Uh, those can kind of make a, you know, normal barbell, normal dumbbell, kind of open hand yeah. kind of challenge. Yeah, so they're really nice. It's a great implement to snap right onto whatever you're working with. So it's a good way to train your hands for better strength. So one of the things that we like to talk about on the podcast when it comes to powerlifting, uh, we talk about specificity a lot. So we talk yeah. about dynamic correspondence. Uh, so when we talk about these things, it's like what we want to have, pick exercises that have a high transfer to the competition lift. So in terms of like squatting, benching, and deadlifting, obviously the most specific thing you could do is a one rep, a single or like a one rep max, you know, something about 90% in your competition stance with the competition barbell under, you know, competition conditions. Obviously you can't do specific training all the time because you can burn out and things like that. But when it comes to grip strength uh, and specifically for the deadlift, what are some kind of like do's and don'ts and like what would you say is specific and what would you say is maybe like some common exercise that you maybe see that we don't have as high a transfer as maybe the average power lift may, may think. Right. So let's, let's go with bouncing off specificity. I mean, that's, that's the, the way you want to go the majority of the time in order to strengthen your grip for the deadlift. So you're looking at the normal size bar that you would use. Um, and you would look at uh, getting away from straps, things like that. Use your fingers to do the work. Even on lifts like, like a seated row or something like that, make sure your fingers are doing the work, you're not using straps. Um, and especially, one of the biggest mistakes that I hear people talk about all the time is that they use a, a ton of thick bar for a long period of time and they think, well, my, my lifts went up doing fat grips or the axle or whatever, but then they go back to the deadlift and they see that they, they barely made any increases. And that is because of specificity and dynamic correspondence and, and, and all that terminology that fits very well. Because if you, if you look at your fingers, each finger has multiple joints. And the, the further you get away from the grip that you use on a, on a barbell on the deadlift, then the less specific carryover you're going to see on your deadlift grip. So this, with thick bar, you end up in a grip like this. You train that for a long time. Yeah, your hands get stronger that, that position. Yeah. in that position. So what is it? Like they say with isometrics, you strengthen 15 degrees. 15 degrees in and out away from that specific position. Well, I don't know. I don't even know how to measure that with fingers. Yeah. Is that 15 it's, degrees with each joint? That's, or? A, that's, a good, that's a good point. You know? And I would say probably uh, just even from experience, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a different lift. And one of the other things you want to consider with the axle bar, um, which you know, maybe like would be an argument maybe if you wanted to do some thick bar training, maybe you could talk about like when it maybe is, is appropriate, but uh, like obviously if you're a strong man versus a power lifter, that's a different discussion. Totally different ball game. But in terms of power lifting, especially if you're using an axle, it's also good the bar is thicker, it's also gonna be a little bit further away from your midfoot. Uh, it's gonna be further out in front of you. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a different challenge. It's gonna be a little bit different leverage and lift. Um, so these are all things to consider. Um, again, it's not, not to say that you couldn't do it from time to time if you wanted to use it as an accessory or something. I know like Donnie Thompson was a big proponent of it. And uh, from my understanding, talking with Donnie, he had some lower back issues and I kind of forced him to go lighter. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of his like kind of rationale. So he was still able to kind of practice the deadlift and still kind of get like a, uh, you know, a, a stimulus from it. Uh, but in terms of, uh, and to my knowledge, I don't think he had any grip issues. So that's what I was going to um, say. I doubt so, he had a grip issues. So it's one of the things that uh, I know Jesse Norris is another guy who comes to mind who did a lot of axle bar training. But to my understanding, it was a way for him to get volume in and limit the amount of weight he was doing. So it was a little bit less stressful on his back, but he was still kind of able to train a deadlift pattern. So in terms of actually strengthening your hands, probably the thick bar is probably the number one. Uh, kind of, I'd say myth or like kind of misnomer. I think a lot of power just think, oh yeah, this is going to be harder on my grip, but again, it's not going to necessarily have a high transfer. So I literally just got a comment about that and how a guy put a lot of time in on thick bar yeah. and went back to his deadlift and did, did not, didn't really improve, it literally so. just popped up this week. So I think it's a good, um, I think that's something that, you know, when you, maybe on the surface, oh yeah, this is going to be harder on my hands, so this should, should help, but um, like I said, to kind of dive a little bit deeper, this is kind of why we don't recommend that. Mm -hmm. So in terms of specificity of the grip, 
like what type of exercises are we looking at and what are some things that maybe would have like a higher like, transfer uh, to like to the actual like you know deadlift i know you talked about not using straps is there anything else that people uh should be kind of like looking at in terms of exercise selection or in terms of um just making sure that they're getting the most out of their hand training well i think one of the one of the opportunities that people miss right from the beginning is the is they go right to a over under grip right right from the beginning. like the first one up. yeah yeah so like i think i think people should get accustomed to going double overhand and maybe even some thumbless work where they peel their thumb completely off the, the bar. And what would be like the benefit of like uh, using the thumbless versus the thumb? So it's just, it's more pure finger work going with thumbless. So there's a couple different thumblesses, like true thumbless, your thumbs don't touch. If thumb. you wrap your thumb over the backside. So still getting a little assistance. It, there is some assistance there, more than you think. That's that's called, uh, that's generally called monkey, monkey grip. grip. When you lift with something or we're cupping, from arm wrestling, it's called cupping, but um, but that I think that's that's one of the big things. Like some younger lifters that I've seen go in there and just throw a forty-five on each side of the bar, and they're already yeah. into this position. Go, I would say go ahead and do double overhand, you know, to work your way up, and then you're not gonna like go for a max on double overhand every time, but you know, do your first few sets with double overhand. Some strength. Uh, what I would say, just from a powerlifting coaching standpoint. I, um, what I usually do, if it's an athlete uh, or general population and not a competitive lifter, I actually like to see them go double overhand as long as they can, uh, just from a safety uh, situation. And again, I've never seen, we've never, knock on wood, had a person tear a bicep, but we do, we have seen it happen, uh, especially if they're yanking on the bar. So uh, the double overhand or even like a hook grip can be very beneficial because it's just more symmetrical. It's a little bit easier to engage the lats. So from a technique standpoint, um, when, when someone's kind of a little bit past that, novice stage i think there is some uh value in just using a mixed grip a little bit more often just from a skill standpoint but then once that skill is kind of mastered it's not going to be like too, too hard to kind of bounce back and forth between the double it's like the skill isn't that much different i will say though especially for like a sumo deadlifter even more so than a conventional deadlifter um you know there can be a little bit more of kind of you see like a helicopter going on if they're not able to kind of engage the lap on an underhand so we're kind of eliminating that from the equation. Someone already has the deadlift down, the skill is down pat. These, this advice is for somebody that is, okay, kind of experiencing grip issues in the deadlift. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there for some people that are kind of newer. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to obviously practice how you play. So if you're gonna obviously compete with a mixed grip, you do, need, you do need to kind of master that as a skill. And then when we start talking about actually grip training, uh, using the double overhand in the warmups is definitely key. Um, and it's something I think uh, it's a really simple trick and maybe that you could also talk about even just like uh, some of maybe some holds because mm -hmm. uh, that's some advice I've given it sounds like simple so you can maybe kind of talk about that a little bit yeah sure so so we'll do I'll have people do holds either they'll, they'll deadlift from the floor or they'll take it off a box or a rack uh, in my gym generally it's a rack okay so and they might go double overhand or they might go alternated grip it, it depends on on the situation i guess mainly like what the actual athlete is but you can do it both ways you can track both ways both grips but the the idea about holds and this is another problem that i've seen is people will grip will will lock into the bar and then hold it for like 20 30 seconds and i don't know about you but i like to get my one rep max <laughs> over with yeah, long earlier than 20 to 30 seconds. So again, going back to specificity, time. You, you need to take, take into consideration the time. So you want me to go into what I suggest with holds? Or? Uh, so I don't think we need to get into like, so obviously we're gonna get into the, the product details a little bit later. So okay. we'll talk about specific time, but obviously like just thinking like logically here, mm -hmm. I would say most people's deadlifts are gonna take, you know, on like someone who's really explosive, uh, you know, maybe like, a, you know, like a Larry Williams comes to mind too. We're going to talk maybe a little bit more about in a second. Um, these deadlifts are going to generally take a little bit shorter than someone like myself. Uh, maybe I don't know how explosive you can you take like oh, an average explosive. No, not, I'm not. More, yeah, more, less more, than more grinding. Yeah, so more some people are going to be more explosive. Some people are going to be more grinding in nature. Um, someone that's more explosive, I'd say their lift's going to take under three seconds. And then I would say for someone that's a little bit more grindy, it could, you know, six, eight, I have seen a 10 second grinder, you know, uh, that's more rare, but so like I said, somewhere in like three, 
I'd say on average, like three to six, three to eight seconds is gonna be like your one or max pull. So when you start to get longer than like 10 seconds, I think it starts to like, again, get less specific and more, yeah. more general. Diminishing in, returns. In nature. Um, so it's gotta be obviously heavy enough to transfer over to a one or max dever, and it's gotta be, you know, short or long enough, depending on how like you know, time-wise, if it's again longer than 10 seconds, if it's, like, if it's less than like two or three seconds, it's obviously probably not like long enough. So somewhere in that sweet spot. Um, and I always tell my athletes, especially some of the bigger guys, maybe we can talk about, uh, you know, this is going to be like an issue, especially sometimes as you gain body weights, uh, the bars just get out, get out in front of you and your leverage has changed as well. So these holds become really important, especially for bigger men. Uh, you start to see like your squat becomes your best lift, the deadlift can suffer sometimes. Um, so having those longer holds at the top, even if you're doing a set of five, set of three, holding that last rep a little bit longer than you need to. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, the, that's because if you look at the bar path, it may seem like it's going to go straight up and down, but especially bigger guys with bigger thighs, that bar is actually going to swing around, swing away, and that's going to that's going to change. That leverage change is going to change the way that it sits on your fingers. So it becomes not not completely static because you may have to actually pull the bar back. So yeah, so it's almost like a dynamic effort at. You know, with the fingers, it's, they're moving dynamically. So it's something to be aware of, for sure. Uh, so we talked about um, the thick bar and why maybe it's not the best idea. We talked about um, the different types of grip, utilizing double over and utilizing longer holds, um, whether it be from the floor or out of a rack. And then uh, the other thing that we maybe want to talk about briefly is maybe the use of like uh, bands and common resistance. Yeah, so I, I really like bands and chains because it, it loads the, the deadlift movement up near the lockout where people generally have the most problem with their grip. So yeah, they might have trouble off the floor, but that's generally not a grip issue. They're gonna it's gonna slip out of their hands because of something going on on top. So I I really like that. Um, that's something that has helped me in my own personal uh, grip training is using bands on the axle in order to load that upper range. Um, I don't know if this is gonna come into play so much with deadlift training, but you have to look at the cuff or whatever the fixture is called. I'm not even sure what it's called. The fixture that goes onto a bar to hold onto chains and things like that. Um, sometimes that can cause like an increase in friction and then you don't get the same rotation on an axle. I don't know if that really comes into play with a barbell as much? Sure. Uh, so one thing, uh, I don't know if it uh, will hamper the rotation of the bar so much, uh, but um, whether you're using a stiff bar or a deadlift bar, normal size of the diameter, uh, but I've also noticed, especially if you're a sumo lifter, the chains will actually um, kind of prevent some of the pulling of the slack out to the whip, actually, which could be a benefit, so it could actually potentially increase the range of motion a little bit, so you'd be a little bit more under time under tension. Um, so that's like one thing where I like really bunching up the chains in the center for like a sumo lifter. It makes the lockout even harder uh, because you have this like kind of mass in the center and it's really hard to get grips through. So I think from a grip stand, I've always actually found, especially when I'm pulling sumo, that sometimes like chains, doing chains is harder than doing a straight weight just because it makes the lockout more really challenging for me, um, regardless of the, of the athlete's taking the point. So I think chains are an excellent tool. Um, and I think bands, and then obviously with the bands, it's also kind of, the bands are constantly pulling downward and it's really trying to like rip, rip it out of your hands. So I think for me that the bands have been uh, something that's been really beneficial from an explosive standpoint and a speed standpoint. And one of the things that we talk about too is like, it, it, this is a little bit harder of a quality to train, but obviously if you get faster, you're not going to need to hold the bar, uh, to hold onto the bar as long. So if you're working on being more explosive and accelerating the weight, so chains and bands can be also be very beneficial for teaching the, the lifter to accelerate the motion. Yes. And if you can lock out sooner, you don't need to yeah. we'll be able to hold onto the bar as long. So. If, you, if you can cut your, let's, if, I mean, I, I think it would be a good idea for people to actually examine their deadlift and take a note of how long it takes them to, to yeah. finish a one rep max. And if you could, if it was, let's say it's four and a half seconds, if you could shave like a quarter second off of there by getting faster, I think that right there would help your your, your grip abilities. Um, the other thing, the, and this is where it's really important for me because I have had a ton of back injuries, is if I'm using band tension, then I don't have to pull as much weight off of the actual floor 
that weight's going to engage much higher. Com compromised position. Yeah. So you're going to have the biggest moment on the lower back uh, when you're in the bottom. So obviously, something if you do it, if you have a lower back issue or just maybe training around an injury, you can kind of really up, make the bottom position really light where you're the most vulnerable, and so allow you to get a great training effect uh, while kind of working around that injury. So yeah, I, t I totally agree, and that's one of the reasons why we like to do like bands, chains, and even like re reverse band work as well. You know, get to like a contest. Mm -hmm. uh, other thing to consider in terms of being efficient, obviously if your technique is better, uh, your arms are longer, your hips are in the right spot, your pull is going to be shorter as well. So by being more explosive, having better technique, better mechanics, it's just gonna make the pull a lot more efficient. So if you have a long way to go, if you have a longer pull, again, it's gonna be longer that you're gonna have to hold onto the bar. So if you can mi minimize the range of motion, whether that be just a more efficient conventional, sometimes actually bringing your, your feet in, and ducking your knees out a little bit can make the pull a little bit shorter, uh, getting your arms a little bit longer, learning to like really depress the shoulder blades. All these are kind of tips and tricks that can shorten the range of motion. And when you're dealing with maximum weights, every like little bit, like even every millimeter, every inch, you know, makes a big difference that you can kind of shave off that range of motion. Yeah, so. Yeah, for sure. Um, and these make dollars, guys. That's right, it, it all adds up. So I want to talk about uh, kind of like why we are coming together for this. And so originally, uh, this was a couple of years ago, um, I was having some issues with my grip. I actually had a little bit of like a hand injury um, and um, I was kind of stuck. Like I, I had pulled 700 pounds previously and then I was kind of stuck in like the low 500 range and it was kind of really be becoming an issue for me. Um, so I reached out to Jed and I kind of did like a beta version of this program and it worked really well. And obviously since then, I've been able to, you know, routinely pull over 600 pounds in multiple of the weight classes, multiple competitions. My last competition, I pulled a very handily 650 deadlift, no issues with my calluses, no issues with my lockout. Um, and even though I've lost over hundred pounds of body weight, I've been able to maintain a lot of strength. And like I said, now my lockout is much better. My grip is much better. I haven't had any issues on any of the meets I've done in probably the past like three years. So this, this protocol is really good. Um, we kind of talked about some of the exercises. So obviously you guys are probably thinking like, well, how do I put it all together? And so that's what the product is gonna be. So again, the product's gonna kind of go through the exercises in more detail. We're gonna go through the program itself, uh, the sets and reps. There's gonna be a version, that if you don't have a deadlift program, there'll be a version where you can follow just doing the deadlift program plus the grip work. If you already have a deadlift program, there'll be an option where you just add in the grip work in addition to your normal routine. So it'd be very, very easy to use. So. Um, and specifically, while we're really trying to get this out now, uh, most recently we've had a couple of our athletes, most notably like Larry Williams, he's, he just missed a 900 pound deadlift uh, in training, excuse me, in, uh, at his last competition that would have given the all time world record 308. So we really wanted to kind of fine tune this product so we could help athletes like him and uh, so make sure that they're you know breaking records and PRs and all that. So I don't know if there's anything you also want to add to like why we're doing the product and maybe who it's for, like who would this product be? Before. Well, don't think that this is something that's just for Elite. like ultra high level uh, competitors. Sure. I mean, um, the, the deadlift is a great movement for everyone, not just powerlifters. So if, if you're if you're interested in just being all around fit, or if you do competitions, or if you do uh, CrossFit, strong maybe another sport this year. Yeah, your baseball, football. Um, that grip strength is usually important for like a lot of any, you know, anytime, anything you got to hold an implement or hold the person like grappling, all these different sports. We do a lot of, train a lot of wrestlers here. So yeah, for the, any athlete would be great. And we're going to, we'll, we'll be showing you things that will help you with your grip and also like keep your lower arms healthy too. So, cause that's very important, especially if you haven't, if you're not used to training your grip intensely, you know, you can end up with some not bumps and bruises, but some overuse injuries, basically. And we're gonna show you how to keep that away. Uh, naturally, we don't wanna set you up for, for injury down the road, so we wanna keep you in, in top shape. And you know, if you can iron some of that stuff out, maybe you're already dealing with like a tennis elbow or a golfer's elbow. I, I help people with that all the time. So that's gonna be included in the, the product too. So uh, we're gonna be multiple benefits to the product and we're really excited to get it out to you. Uh, I guess anything else you want to kind of uh, explain? I guess we, could, we kind of went through everything, but anything, any closing remarks on, um, you know, where when it's, when it's going to come out, where, where can they find it, and all that good stuff? Yeah, so uh, so I have a website, dieselcrew.com. 
it'll be listed there. I've got a, a strength catalog on that page and you can find it there. Also, I'll be doing announcements about it on my YouTube channel. It's just under Jed Johnson, J-E-D-D-J-O-H-N-S-O-N. Um, and I think uh, well, it's gonna be both hard copy. So if you're old school like me and you like to actually have DVDs on your wall or in your library, then you can get it that way, shipped right to you. Or if you're uh, one of these guys that only likes to get on your computer and watch the videos, okay, we'll take care of you too. We'll make it digital. So we'll have a digital, digital copy as well as a physical product. Uh, there'll be a program, so there'll be, like, there'll be PDFs, so there'll be maybe like a physical manual, like a DVD, if they choose to do that. Do that. So, yeah. Cool, cool. We'll have all the bases covered. So there'll be different options. If you guys want to um, kind of, you know, we're looking to, like I said, February uh, 2020. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. If you want to kind of be like, um, you know, definitely subscribe to Judge channel as well. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for future updates. Uh, anyone, if you guys mention like the podcast, uh, you know, we'll definitely kind of hook you up and, you know, make sure you guys are like first on the pre-sale list once, that's that's a good idea. once, once, it, come, once it comes out, yeah. we'll definitely take, take care of you guys. Um, and again, so I want to also reiterate, you don't have to be a 900 pound puller to get benefit from this program. Uh, you could be somebody that's just starting out. You could be, so, you know, novice, intermediate, advanced, there's going to be options for all three levels. And, um, you know, we're happy to kind of help any way we can, but it's going to be, you know, I want to get Jet on because again, I like to learn from people that are better than myself. Oh, okay. This is, uh, so I want to, before we close out, uh, just, so let's say someone may be like, you know, our hands are like different, right? So, yeah. So if someone's got like smaller hands or maybe they think, oh, you know, I'm just always going to have a bad grip or like, you know, maybe they're not, what would you kind of say? About That's, that? yeah, That's it's not, sure. it's not true. Uh, especially with the bar that you use in powerlifting. There's ways around that. You can, you can bring your your hand strength up, and so no matter how they're built, they can get yes, the product. You don't necessarily have to have like long fingers or like these really big hands. So, right. And like I said, even someone like myself, I have pretty like relatively small hands for a guy my size. I've been able to pull you know uh, 700 pounds successfully, and then I've done uh, you know uh, 660 in competition. Uh, I've done you know 600 pound deadlifts routinely. Like I said, I'm not really built to pull. I don't really have these humongous hands. And uh, it work, works just fine for me. And I'd say I'm pretty, like I said, average in terms of like genetics and things like that. We've had a lot of males and females have a lot of success with, people, with these techniques that have grip issues in the past. So it's definitely tried and true. We definitely want to get more people on the program because we don't want to see any more job deadlifts in competition. We think that's something that you can actually take into your own hands. And no, no pun intended. Wow. And then, <laughs> look at that. So uh, thank you guys for watching. If this podcast helped you, uh, please share with a friend. If maybe, maybe you don't have a grip problem, but maybe you have a friend that does, share it with them. I think this would be uh, just a good listen for them. Uh, definitely check out the links in the description below so you can be the first uh, to know about the product when it comes out. Thank you guys so much for listening. And until next time, stay strong, and we'll see you soon. All the best. Take care.